Issue 49, Gender Favoritism. A. I am in my seventh month of pregnancy, but because of my husband's attitude, I feel as if I have been carrying this baby for a year. He has shot off his big mouth to everyone who will listen that if I don't have a boy, he will leave us both in the hospital. Everyone laughs it off, and so do I, but it really does hurt. If I have a girl, I will feel as if I have failed him. To make matters worse, his two brothers' wives have had three girls apiece, and they say they are through. I am afraid my in-laws are counting on me to have a son, although they have been gracious enough to say it doesn't matter. B. My parents and I have a very poor relationship. They've seen my five-month-old daughter only three times. I have an older sister and two brothers. We all live in the same city. The favoritism shown to our brothers has caused my sister and me a lot of pain. This has been going on for as long as we can remember. In our last phone conversation, I came right out and told my mother that I still hurt from the emotional abuse I have suffered since early childhood, and that her favoritism towards the boys is very painful. I asked, point blank, why she did this to my sister and me. There was no answer. The reason I felt compelled to be so blunt was because I had had a serious illness several weeks before, and my parents had not bothered to visit me in the hospital or send a card. I was crushed by this ultimate rejection. Can it be that some parents just don't want daughters? My sister is a wonderful person and everyone loves her. It has taken me a long time to see that I too am lovable and have many friends. I have two precious daughters and it boggles my mind that parents would not value their granddaughters. Comprehension. A. 1. What did the husband say he would do if his wife doesn't have a boy? 2. Did anyone take his statement seriously? 3. How many girls do his two brothers have? 4. Will they try to have a boy again? 5. Do her parents-in-law say they count on her to have a son? B. 1. Why does the woman have a poor relationship with her parents? 2. What did her mother say when asked why she favors her sons over her daughters? 3. Did her parents visit her when she was in the hospital? How did that make her feel? Let's talk. 1. How many children do you want to have? 2. Do you want boys or girls? 3. If your spouse did not want to have daughters, what would you do? 4. What are the reasons people generally favor boys over girls? 5. Would you want to live with your son after he gets married? Why or why not? Opinion Samples One, these clatter traps who specify a preference are a strange breed of jackass, and there is no known cure. If her husband were the king of Siam, he might have a succession problem. But since he's not, what's his beef? Husbands who advertise they want sons always wind up nutty as fruitcakes over their daughters. It never fails. Question. What's the difference between raising boys and girls? 2. Her mother sounds seriously disturbed and probably also came from a dysfunctional family. It is possible that she had a very poor relationship with her own mother, and there hangs the whole sad tale. Question. Who favors boys more, men or women? Issue 49. Gender Favoritism 
Did you meet your friend? Yes, we had a lovely dinner, but she was so depressed. Depressed? Why? Didn't she just have a baby? Yes, but she's sorry it wasn't a boy. What difference does that make? It makes a lot of difference. She feels like she's a failure. Her husband really wanted a son to carry on the family name. He doesn't have any brothers, you know. Well, it's his fault, you know. What do you mean, his fault? It's always the male's chromosomes that determine the children's gender. Oh, I knew that, but it isn't his fault. He doesn't have any control over that. I know, but it isn't her fault either. She shouldn't feel guilty or depressed about it. That's what I told her, too, but I'm not sure she took my advice to heart. Besides, I think little girls are great. I'm sure they're a lot easier to raise than boys, and they're so sweet. You never had daughters, did you? No, you're right. But am I wrong? Girls are easy until they're teenagers, but then they're much harder than boys. You have to worry about them all the time. They should all be treated the same, I think. Not exactly the same. Not all boys or all girls are exactly alike, and each needs a different kind of treatment. But their gender shouldn't matter. The voice of experience. Don't make fun of me just because I never had daughters. I think it's just common sense. It's a good thing you don't have daughters, I think. They need a strong father to guide them, or they'll just take advantage of their weak dad. You'd let them do anything, I suppose. No, but I'd give them the same guidelines that I give my sons. And what would these be? Be careful about your actions. Think of the consequences of what you do. And try not to hurt yourself or anybody else. What's wrong with that advice? It's good advice, but kids need more than just advice. Children, and especially girls, need someone to think on their behalf. They haven't had much practice in making good decisions and don't know what to do. There are too many temptations, and they're too naive to make good, hard choices. It doesn't matter whether they are boys or girls. They need to start making choices at a young age with their parents' guidance, or they will never learn how. Even though they will inevitably make some bad decisions, they have to stand on their own two feet. Questions 1. Give at least two reasons why the woman should not be depressed. 2. According to the dialogue, are boys easier to raise than girls? 3. What advice would the man give as a father? Is that advice sufficient, do you think?